I want that this church can be a, a, a ¿cómo se dice? Una, una base de lanzamiento como de los eh, eh, rockets, the shuttles, space shuttles, how do you say that? Space. Ok, donde podamos nosotros lanzar, launch a, a lot of missionaries for all the world. Not only youth people, not only uh, almost teenagers, actually you need to be 18 uh, at least to, to involve in missions, but you, you can start to learn. But I, I want to send youth couples maybe, maybe. <risa> eh, y, y algunos con hijos, algunos a lo mejor sin hijos y, y van a escuchar todo esto Yo quiero que ustedes pregunten muchachos No quiero que estén solamente escuchando Quiero que esta reunión la preparamos con los muchachos de, de Madison Siéntanse libres de hablar ¿ok? Feel free to talk, feel free to ask Whatever you want eh, eh, No se queden con dudas y, y yo quiero que ustedes conozcan un poquito Y poco a poco A lo mejor después en este año y si hay algunos de ustedes interesados, los subo a mi camioneta y me los llevo a Madison, Wisconsin, para que conozcan ustedes la base de Youth with a Mission allá y vean de qué se trata, vean lo que hacen los muchachos, cómo trabajan, los programas de entrenamiento, tienen unos programas de entrenamiento sobre la Biblia y después del programa de entrenamiento los mandan a diferentes países a, a, a trabajar en diferentes escuelas, a trabajar con la gente menos necesitada. Ese es el propósito y esa es la gran comisión de Jesucristo. Así es que lo vamos a cumplir, lo vamos a hacer y yo quiero que nosotros empecemos a conocer esto. ¿Verdad? No estoy diciendo que mañana voy a mandarlos a ustedes para allá, pero empiecen a conocer porque esto tiene que ser un llamado de parte de Dios. This is going to be a call from God. If, call, if God is not calling you, you can go. But if, if God is calling you, you must go. To the missions, ok, entonces si alguno escucha la voz de Dios y siente en su corazoncito ah, como que esto es para mí, no lo duden y empiecen a orar y Dios va a hacerlo, Dios va a hacerlo algo que yo platicaba con estos muchachos es que no muchas iglesias están dispuestas a apoyar jóvenes para misiones no muchas iglesias, porque las iglesias quieren tener a toda su gente adentro de la iglesia estos son mis jóvenes que no se me vayan aquí y los pastores casi no quieren soltar iglesias y cuando yo le, a, a sus jóvenes y cuando yo les dije a ellos yo lo que quiero es lanzar a mis jóvenes al mundo a que vayan a predicar dijeron wow tú estás loco tú estás loco porque los pastores normalmente no hacen eso los pastores quieren tener a toda su gente dentro de la iglesia pero yo quiero que nuestra iglesia muchachos pueda ir a las naciones a predicar el evangelio de Jesucristo ok Así es que vamos a orar, pónganse de pie, please. Pónganse de pie, vamos a orar, vamos a cantar un canto con, con nuestro grupo de alabanza. Los muchachos de Tennessee están por llegar también. Es otro grupo muy interesante que viene. Y, este, y después de este canto con, con el grupo de alabanza, este, si le quieres hablar a esta chica, la de la batería, que se quedó ahí adentro, este, vamos a, a darles el tiempo a los muchachos de, de, de Youth with a Mission para que ellos compartan con ustedes. Close your eyes, please, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Vamos a dar un aplauso a nuestra baterista invitada de hoy. Our guest drummer. Thank you very much. Close your eyes, please, guys. Vamos a orar. Padre, en el nombre de Jesús. Lord, in the name of Jesus. We are here in this evening to give you praise, to give you honor and glory, because you are worthy to do you. To receive that glory and honor. Lord, in this evening, we are here to present ourselves. Queremos delante de ti, Señor, presentarnos. Queremos, Señor, que cada uno de estos jóvenes, cada una de estas señoritas, Señor, esta tarde puedan ser ministrados. Y si tú estás llamando a alguno de ellos para ir a las misiones, para ir a predicar tu palabra, Señor, en aquellos lugares donde hay tanta necesidad, en aquellos lugares donde quizás nadie se ha preocupado por ellos. No quiero que nuestra iglesia esté pensando solamente en nosotros. No quiero que nuestra iglesia caiga en soberbia, que nuestra iglesia caiga en altivez. 
y que pensemos que porque somos una iglesia que está creciendo o somos una iglesia que tú estás bendiciendo, nos vamos a quedar aquí encerrados nosotros disfrutando de tus bendiciones. Queremos bendecir al mundo. Señor, y de esta generación hermosa que tenemos aquí, esta hermosa generación de adolescentes, esta hermosa generación de jóvenes, si tú quieres llamar a algunos, si tú quieres, Señor, que algunos de estos jóvenes se conviertan en misioneros, los ponemos en tus manos. En este momento, Señor, en este momento, para que tú hables a sus corazones, Padre. Gracias, gracias porque están aquí, gracias porque se dieron cita para estar aquí en esta tarde. Queremos alabarte a través de este canto y recibir lo que tienes para nosotros, Padre. En nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amén. Vamos a alabar al Señor, muchachos. Vamos a dar un aplauso al Señor otra vez. Dale un aplauso fuerte a Él. Y vamos a usar nuestras palmas. Es hermoso ver los muchachos estando en la casa de Dios. Vamos a dar la gloria, vamos a dar la honra al Señor con esta canción. hermoso eres Jesús son tus palabras es tu amor Cuán glorioso eres Jesús es tu poder fue tu cruz la que me salvó me rescató y un momento ahí nos dio libertad te doy gloria gloria te doy gloria gloria te doy gloria gloria a ti Jesús te doy gloria gloria te doy gloria Glorioso eres Jesús, eres Jesús, es tu poder, fue tu cruz la que me salvó, me rescató. Espinas, con una corona de espinas, hiciste rey por siempre. Con una corona de espinas, hiciste rey por siempre. Con una corona de espinas, hiciste rey por siempre. Con una corona de espinas. Te hiciste con una corona, con una corona de espinas. Te hiciste rey por siempre, con una corona de espinas. Te hiciste rey por siempre, yo te doy gloria, gloria. Te doy gloria, gloria. Te doy gloria, gloria. A ver esa 
las palmas fuertes al Señor de la gloria te doy Siéntense muchachos Siéntense, vamos a recibir a los muchachos de Madison, John, Becca They are in charge of this group, so please Introduce your group, feel free ¿Están contentos chavos? Sí. Uy, qué contentos están, la torre Parece reunión de la tercera edad, mano, de seniors esto ¿Están contentos chavos? Ahí va, ya la cosa Ok, John Ok, muy bien Okay, all right. Well, we're from Madison, Wisconsin. Um, actually, we're not all from Madison, Wisconsin. We're from different parts. Um, but we all drove over here from Madison, Wisconsin today. So I actually was born near there. My name's John, uh, and this is my wife, Rebecca. So I don't know if you want to say anything about Yes, I do. Rebecca? In español or English. And I am the pastor's niece. So his brother is my dad. And so, yeah, we are... We live in Wisconsin. We have three children. Right now, only Annie is here with us. And we have a nine-year-old and a three-year-old at home. So we're really glad to be with you guys today. And we're from Youth with a Mission, or um, Juventud con una Misión. And uh, we actually met down in Mexico, in Juarez. And that's where I used to live for about four years. Um, and we've been with Youth with a Mission since around 1997. Um, and so let me just let the other guys introduce themselves to you too. These are all friends. We work together and uh, minister together. So why don't you guys just introduce yourselves and then I'll tell you a little bit more about what mission, Youth with a Mission is. Sure. Hello, everybody. So my name, hello. <laughs> my name is Hirotake Watanabe. So just forget about my name. It's like, almost like one song, like Hirotake Watanabe. Uh, just call me Hiro. And uh, I, um, I originally come from Tokyo, Japan. And um, why I'm here, because of, I want to encourage you for all young peoples, because um, I used to be uh, young. Now I'm just a little bit getting older, but I, just, I want to invite you to come to Japan to, to uh, do ministries. We need you. So that's why I'm here. And this is my wife, Mayumi. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. I'm Mayumi. Like a my, you, me. It's <laughs> easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good to see you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Janae Becker, and I am also from... Uh, there you go. Hi. <laughs> and I'm also from the Youth of the Mission Base in Madison, and John and Becca were actually my school leaders, which you'll learn more about the school that is there. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Taking pictures. Okay. Hi. <laughs> My name is Joellen. That's like Joe and Ellen put together. It's like two names in one. So I have double anointing on my name. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm from four hours north of Madison. So like way up in Wisconsin, like the like pretty much almost in Canada. Um, yeah, and I'm actually here with them doing um, like a short-term type of missions ministry thing. So I'm only with them for a few months doing some stuff, but so far it's been amazing. Cool, so we are really glad to be with you guys. We're really glad to be with you guys. Um, and we all met, all of us, we've become friends uh, along the way in this thing called Youth with a Mission. And so we would like to share with you a little bit about what Youth with a Mission is tonight. And more than that, I think what we really hope is that we can share some of God's heart for missions for this world uh, with you. 
So Youth of the Mission was actually started way before any of us were even born in 1960. Um, and it, it was started because uh, God really showed a guy called Lauren Cunningham that, listen, there's so much happening in the world and so many needs, but youth didn't have a way to be a part of that. So basically, if you were young and you wanted to be in missions, most of the doors were closed to you. And, um, and God started to give him a passion and say, you know, it can't be like that. Because actually, youth are the ones who change the world, who are changing the world right now. And so uh, that's not just in areas like music. Like, how many youth are writing the music that is everything that we listen to, isn't it? It affects how we think about things, right? They are the innovators in programming. They are the innovators in companies anymore, right? Um, and so uh, God is using the youth, though, in this world, in missions, in amazing ways. And so Youth of the Mission has been around for about that long, about since 1960, and currently has about 18,000 uh, full-time workers all around the world, um, in all nations of the world. Um, and you'll find them, though, not doing, I don't know, like if I just even say this to you, missionary, what comes in your head? Like what, what is the picture you have of a missionary? What's that? Like being a pastor, right? What else? Traveling, okay, good. What else? Doing Habitat for Humanity. When I was smaller or younger and I heard missionary, what I thought it was like somebody in a jungle, like, you know, like go with like a Bible in one hand and a machete and like go in the jungle, you know, and try to go find somebody, like in a tribe or something. But in Youth of the Mission, what you'll find is like, yeah, actually, in fact, we've done that. We have gone in the jungle uh, in a little canoe and almost sunk in the Amazon River before. Uh, but that's not what Youth of the Mission only does. We do all kinds of things. So you'll find some of these guys like making inventions, how to produce food for people who are going hungry on the other side of the world. And God's releasing technology to people. He's giving them ideas for businesses. Um, he's releasing new music to uh, people in Youth of the Mission for reaching the world through music. And so there's all different ways that people are reaching out in this mission. And we want to give you kind of a little taste of that tonight, uh, and, and some of what God's heart is for this world even more. So I just want to give space to these guys to be able to share that with you, and then hopefully we can also, as you guys have questions or stuff, maybe we can be available for you, uh, any things that maybe are stirring up in your hearts too. So I'm just going to turn it over to everybody to, to share, and uh, feel free to interact with us though, like we don't want it just to be like a preaching, right? So you got a question, something comes to mind, we can always have questions after with pizza, but like anytime you can feel free, I think so. So, okay, go for it. Oh, you want to say? Okay, so, yes, okay, thank you. No, uh, anyways, <laughs> no, first we're going to have Janae come, and uh, Janae's going to be sharing with you a little bit about, um, I think, about the discipleship training school. So, the way that everybody kind of gets into Youth of the Mission is through doing a discipleship training school, and she's going to share with you some of uh, her personal experience in that program, I think. Okay. Um, first of all, so basically what a discipleship training school is, the first school that you would do if you entered Youth with the Mission, and basically what it is, is a four-month, or a six-month school, four months where you do um, training, which is basically like knowing God, so you'll learn all kinds of things about like who is God, what is love, what is forgiveness, just the foundations of relationship with God. And then you have a two-month outreach. Um, yeah, and so how I want to start this is just share about where I was when I first started and how I got to even know about YWAM, because I didn't know anything about Youth with a Mission. And so I was going to school, and I was actually looking to be a photographer. And I was like, oh, what could I like work out of home and just kind of do like photography? And God started like... As I was like going to school, I felt like there was something really deep in my heart that was missing. And so I started praying and I'm like, God, I feel like there's something more. Like I feel like there's something that you're like stirring. Like, yeah, I'm going and doing school, but I just was like in the searching stage. And so I started, I, I heard about Youth as a Mission and uh, their school was about knowing God. And I was like, I think that's what I'm missing. Like, I'm not seeking God with all, like, I want to seek God with all of my heart. And so I ended up coming and doing the school, and God showed up to me in a really w real way. Um, he started showing me 
things that I didn't know about who God was. Like, I didn't, I didn't trust him. And um, one of the ways that I, I realized, uh, one thing that I was really realizing was um, even things with my mom. Like, my mom, like, growing up, my mom had really, really bad health issues. And um, so the whole time growing up, you know, you would pray and you would pray and you'd pray over her and you wouldn't see healing. And so I started questioning the goodness of God. Like, who is God? Like, I go to church. You know, I have a, a good family. I, I have nothing to complain about. But there was these questions that I had in my mind. And so through going through this school, I had time to learn about who God was. I had time to say, God, <laughs> who am I? What do you... What are the desires you've placed in my heart? And, uh, and even healing in this area of questioning who God was. And um, through, through that, um, there was a teaching that, was, that happened. It was called the Father Heart of God. And it was talking about how God is like a father. And I realized that there were places where I'd blamed God for like not healing my mom or not being there when I thought <laughs> he should be there. And so I like really repented in my heart. And God showed up to me in a really real way. Um, and <laughs> pretty much it ended me on the, the floor. And God showed up to me in like almost like a vision. It was like pictures. And God was saying, like, I want to meet with you. Like, I want to be with you. And uh, basically the picture he gave me was that I was in this, like, field with lots of grass and flowers. And I called him the good shepherd, came up to me and grabbed my hand. And as soon as he grabbed me, like, I was clothed in white. And he's like, we have to go see the Father. We have to go see the Father. And so, like, I, I have this picture in my head, and I'm just, like, weeping, like, on the ground. I'm like, oh, my word, oh, my word, God's so good. I, and I don't even know what's going on. But, like, I'm, it's so real to me. And so as he's leading me through and just showing me different things, he takes me to the Father. And he said, Janae, my daughter that I've been waiting for. And he hugged me. And at the end, he just kind of said, okay, now you're supposed to go back. Like, I don't want to go. I like being in this whole thing. This is amazing because I felt whole for the first time. And so what God said to me was, your job is to share with all that you come with that I love and I'm waiting for every single person to come to me in this way. And come to my lap so I can hug and hold them. So that was like an experience in the whole process of preparing to go and reach out into missions was understanding God's love for me personally, understanding who God is for me personally. And from that point on, I could actually freely give because I have God's love flowing outside of, like flowing in me, and I can actually give it outside of me. And so anyways, we're going to show a video now, um, which is my... Um, DTS outreach video. I went with Becca and John to Kenya and Uganda. And you'll just hear some of the, the testimonies and kind of the things we'll be looking at when you go on outreaches um, with the Discipleship Training School. <laughs> Allowing Kuni to regain forces will be painful, painful. We are going to shock the world with what we're going to do. The magnitude of killing we're going to do is going to shock the whole world. Thanks, <laughs> 
occurred on Christmas. More than 220 people have been kidnapped by the uh, Lord's Resistance Army, including some 160 children. Nearly 540 people have been killed and more than 400 kidnapped by the LRA. The number of forcibly displaced in this part of the Democratic Republic of Congo have now surpassed 104,000. Twenty-five years ago, I got an experience where the NRA broke up in the northern part of Uganda, and especially in my village, where our houses were burned, and then all the people were collected into the camps. Some people were slaughtered, some people were burned in their heads, and some people were killed by guns. Our trip to Pader was pretty interesting. There was 12 of us in a small pickup truck, two in the front, four crammed into the cab, and then six of us along with all of our ministry supplies, all of our food for the entire week, and all of our personal items and bedding, all crammed into the back of the pickup truck. As you can see, I have a very spacious and comfortable seating arrangement for the ride to Pader. We somehow fit in there and we just prepared for the really long drive ahead of us. This trip took 14 hours. We were on dusty roads the entire time and so clouds and clouds of red dirt going everywhere. I have lost feeling in my toes. <laughs> They're dangling here. All of us looked pretty ridiculous because we had bandanas covering our noses and sunglasses on. Mom and Dad, no Over the course of the 14 hour drive there, we just sang worship songs as much as we could and it just made us so much more excited about what was to come. Pader, tell us, how do you feel right now? I feel great, Evan. That's excellent. Katie, how do you feel right now? I'm excited. That's good. <laughs> Jeff, how do you feel right now? Amen. Amen. Yeah, this is awesome. I can't believe I'm finally here. So we're really pumped up about it. Can I hear a cheer? Amen. Amen. Woo! Wow. 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 When we pulled up to Pader, we were greeted by a ton of kids. They all came running and were so excited to see who had come to visit them for the week. And um, as we kind of climbed out of the tailgate, the three of us that were in the back were quite dirty and about six shades darker and smeared with dirt and dust. So we were kind of scary to the kids. They kind of ran away from us, but everybody else, they were really um, excited. What do you have to say when you see yourself? <laughs> I'd like to know. <laughs> I never knew. All right, when you see like yourself. <laughs> I never knew I could look like this. <laughs> look at this. Look at my arm. One afternoon, a woman came to us asking for prayer for healing. Um, her mouth was extremely swollen, the whole side of her face. She couldn't smile. She could barely even speak. As we prayed, um, we began to kind of um, get sort of get these ideas from God. And the first one for me was that I should request that Jesus would heal her now. I know I personally just knew very strongly that God was really wanting to heal this woman. Katie began to sing this song, Healer, and so as she began to sing, I picked up on it right away and we sang together. I really felt like God said that she needed to be singing the song out loud with us. So we taught her the song in her language, so as we sang it out, she was praying it. 
God told me that there was a breakthrough and that I need to start praising him for healing her and that he was going to heal her. This woman came to our program and even just the minute she 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 got there I just I saw her and she looked completely different the swelling in her face had disappeared completely and she looked like an entirely new person like the joy that she had was unreal like she just she was beaming. She was just so joyful. I heard her give three different testimonies about how God had healed her. Out of our family, which is approximately about 300 people, we are only two who are born again. For 25 years, I've been praying for my parents to get saved. I went to Morogoro in Tanzania to teach on the BTS. I requested my students to pray with me because of my, my parents and my relatives. And one of the students saw a vision that she saw missionaries going to my village to witness and to start a church. We pulled into this open area and there are a couple of huts there and Job's family was sitting all around under a big mango tree. We gathered there, introduced ourselves, and uh, then we split up in pairs and went off to different houses there. At one of the houses Katie and I went to, um, there was a bunch of people there, like 15. We began to share the gospel with them and about God's love for them. As we were doing that, God just started to fill me with his love for these women that were there. And um, it was a really cool feeling. And at the end of our at the end of our sharing, uh, five of the women wanted to accept Christ, and I just started to cry. <laughs> Paul, the team leader, remained in with my family, and he shared the gospel with my family. It was so neat that God just dropped this message right in my head like this little bomb or something, and it, I was just thinking about how much honor they had shown us since we came to Uganda, and especially even at Job's house, and how people had given us chickens and things like this, and. And uh, it struck me that God was so much more worthy of honor. At the end, I gave them a chance to respond. And uh, Job's father, his mother, his grandmother, and a couple of his other relatives, they all responded. They all said they wanted to give their lives to God. And my mother, and my father, and the daughter to my brother got saved. Plus the other people surrounding our village. In all, there are 14 people who got saved from my family. And I was very happy with this missionary who confirmed that vision that we saw from Tanzania. We immediately thought of having a fellowship at our home under the tree. And we are planning with this team to get some Bibles so that I can take them to have a follow-up. Um, yeah, I really like that video. That was, I like that. It's very powerful. Um, so yeah, like I said, my name is Jo Allen, and I grew up in Wisconsin. Um, and I kind of grew up with a mindset of what missions was, sort of like uh, what John was sharing about. You know, you have the image in your mind of like the missionary hacking with the with the machete in a jungle somewhere, and you're like, yeah, that's what missions is, um, and it is a lot of times. Um, and so I never really saw myself doing that because I was like, well, I don't really have a heart for that, but I guess that's what missions is. So, um, But when I got older, um, I realized that missions was a lot more than being in jungles, hacking stuff with machetes. Um, and God really showed that to me. Uh, I did my DTS in Norway, um, which is a very urban country. Um, there are no jungles, <laughs> and there's a ton of cities. So um, my heart really grew for urban ministries, and um, I realized, hey, you can do missions in cities, or you can do missions in America, your own country. <laughs> um, and so 
God really just revealed that to me, and I was like, this is cool, because I actually have a heart for this. And um, as you guys saw, I was playing the drums earlier, and um, that's a big part of my ministry, um, is music and um, filmmaking, and pretty much anything that involves the arts. I'm very passionate about. Um, and I guess the main message of that is that God doesn't call everyone to the exact same thing. Because if he did that, who would be reaching the people um, living in cities that need to hear about God? If everyone was in um, a jungle or if everyone was just doing ministry in India or in little huts in Africa, um, who would be reaching the like millions of people living in cities? So I think it's so cool how God uses us and uses our passions and our um, talents and abilities and things that we like actually like <laughs> doing. He doesn't just like force us in, well, you have to do this because this is what I say. Um, but he really like partners with us for like things that we enjoy. Like I really enjoy the arts. So he's like, yeah, I'm going to use that. Like I made you to be passionate about the arts and I made you good at things. Like let's do this together and um, you can actually have fun doing missions at the same time. Um, and so, yeah, like what I do is a lot of um, film stuff and a lot of music. And people are like, wait, but how do you use that in missions? Because, like, how do you do that? Like, it's just not, a lot of times people don't understand, like, how you can use the arts in missions. Um, and for me, it's, like, always made sense, <laughs> like, how you can do that. Um, through music, I mean, like, the arts in general is just a very powerful tool that we have um, to be able to share the gospel or um, even just encourage people who are, are already believers um, and we can minister to those people as well. So music with the, you know, like song writers writing very powerful um, things and people just really being like touched by music. I mean, I'm sure like when you guys listen to music, like that's you know, like it impacts you in some way, whether it's good or bad. Um, and with things like um, films and movies and all that kind of stuff, like if you look at our society and our culture today, like that's the number one way that we're influenced. Like since we're like little to like adults, like we're looking to those types of people. And a lot of it are, they're bad influences in, in many ways. Um, and we shouldn't be like those people. And that's why... God is calling people into like filmmaking and into, into the arts is to change that atmosphere of darkness and to like shine his light into those places and um, I really believe that um, God is like the ultimate creative person that there ever was because um, I mean he created the world so right there that's pretty creative <laughs> I mean, he, like, designed the zebra. Like, that's pretty cool. That's really creative. Like, how did he come up with those color schemes? And how did he come up with, like, beautiful things like Niagara Falls and, like, the Grand Canyon and stuff? Like, that takes a creative mind. So right there, like, that is kind of, okay, God's creative, so shouldn't we be creative since we were created in his image? Um, and so if people are like, no, you can't, you can't use the arts in missions or, like, yeah, whatever, creativity. Like, no, we shouldn't overlook that. That's, that's pretty powerful. Like, God is the ultimate creator, created us in his image. So it's kind of a mandate, <laughs> like, <laughs> be creative. <laughs> um, and so I guess I have a video to show. I can show that and then keep talking afterwards a little bit. It sort of fits in. I can um, talk a little bit about this film that I made. Um, I made it when I was... Um, in my DTS in Norway, and it was a creative arts DTS. So um, I was in the acting track. So I was learning all about how to use acting and missions and how to um, be able to steward that tool and really be effective for the kingdom of God. Um, but God really showed me um, film, <laughs> and I really grew in love with like using film to impact people and... Um, just to shape our society. Like, I think that's so powerful. So I created this film, and um, God really was the creator of it, but I just kind of did what he said. Um, and it was actually made for someone in my DTS, but I didn't know who they were. 
Um, cause it was like a prophetic exercise that we were doing. So we were supposed to ask God for a picture or for a word for this person that we didn't know who they were. Um, and so I had this, I got this picture from God. I just downloaded it in my head and I was like, Hey, this would be cool to make into a film, but I've never actually made a film. Hmm. This might be a bit of a challenge. Um, but I did it, um, uh, with some help and, um, it just goes to show that God can use you even if you're not a trained professional or even if you're not this like person who goes off to college to study Greek and theology and all this stuff. Um, he can still use you in your small little tiny gift that you have to give to him. Um, yeah, because it's not you that's doing this stuff. He's the one who's like in control of your life and he's the one who's um, giving you that creativity and giving you those things that you need. So, um, yeah, you can go ahead and play the film, and I'll be back. <laughs> So it was really cool how this all kind of came about because I wasn't planning on it being like something people would actually see. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll show it to the people in my DTS and this mystery person who it's for. Um, and I thought that was going to be like it. And then I was just going to go on with the rest of my life. Um, but as I was making it, God was just like really calling me further into um, into film and into the arts and saying like, this is, this is sort of what I made you to do. <laughs> I mean, ultimately he made us to be lovers of him and um, to love other people, um, just like the great commandment. But um, he creates us with like tasks, I think, um, to do along the way and tools that we can use to do the great commission, which is to love him. Um, and so he was kind of showing me like, okay, this is, this is the tool that I'm gonna give you. Um, and it ended up being like played in all these different countries that I found out like um, back in high school I was on a missions trip in Northern Ireland and I made a contact with this youth pastor and like we didn't really stay in contact he was like my Facebook friend and whatever he every now and then would like comment on something and so I posted the video on my Facebook wall and I was like I got all these like likes and stuff and I was like well that's kind of cool yeah like I'm I'm blessing people by this, that's fun. Um, and then this youth pastor guy commented and was like, hey, do you mind if I show this at this big youth conference for Northern Ireland youth people? 
And I was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. And um, there was like hundreds of people there <laughs> that like saw this video and um, he said they were like really touched and it was awesome. Um, another pastor in like California who I don't, I don't really know, he's my, um, one of the girls that was actually in the video, he's dad, her, her dad is a pastor in California and he showed it to his congregation and stuff. And so like even we don't even when we don't think that God can like use our little in the grand scheme of things, that video's not that great. <laughs> um, but even when we don't think it's great, he can use the little things um, that we have. And yeah, like how can we not go and do what God calls us to when um, we've experienced his love and we've experienced um, just the heart for other people, the people that we want to touch. Like, you guys don't really have an excuse not to <laughs> because he can use whatever you have um, for his kingdom. And so you can't be like, well, you know, I don't really want to do ministry or I don't really want to do missions because, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough or because it's not this, I'm not, I don't want to be a pastor, so I can't really do that. Um, but he can use whatever you have. And so you guys don't have an excuse <laughs> not to. And that can look like whatever. You guys could be a doctor. Like, he calls people into the medical field, and that's a mission in itself. He calls people into the arts, into professional athletes. It can be missionaries in their field. Um, so it doesn't have to look like how you think it looks like. And I guess that's sort of what I want to close with. <laughs> Thank you. How are you guys doing? Are you guys doing okay? It's good um, because um, sometimes when I share the stories and especially church, you know, like I don't want to make feel that kind of awkward. And also, like I want to talk about something real today because um, pastors say you can talk whatever I want. So I want to encourage you, and then I got to be careful what I say. But um, I w just want to. Sh encourage you for each person here because when I was at your age I was not at church I was uh, more upset that um, I was part of gang members <laughs> and uh, I just didn't know what's Jesus Christ what is a God it's just God is just for me, is that it's just wimpies. Oh, Jesus, Jesus Christ is not a God because he died on the cross. And I said, what the heck? He's got no powers. Why he died on the cross? So I didn't mean that. I didn't know what the love means. So I, um, I graduated from high school and I quit being gang members because I felt that my li life will be over because I always fight and oh, just parents just has problems and just, you know, like uh, there is no, I feel love. Even I, I didn't think about going to go to college. I just want to be like fight with priests or destroy this society. It always talks about unfairness. Even I just complain my parents or friends. And then I didn't think about that. I can change the nations. Or even I didn't think about being Christians, being missionaries. So I just want to make more shorter my story that because it, it takes a while. It's got long to talk. So uh, do you guys understand my uh, English? You guys okay? If you don't understand my English, please raise a hand. You know, I want to. I need uh, because it make clear to what I talk about. Um, so why change my life? Because of my aunt. She's a Christian. She's American. It's kind of a complicated story, but my, my aunt, uh, aunt, uncles married to Americans. And uh, she, she, was, she still lives in Seattle, Washington. But she came to Japan and she asked me, hey, you want to change your life? And you want to be, you want to study at college? Why well, you want to change your life? But I, I just, I was just annoying kids. I just, I don't want to go to USA. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to change my life. But my aunt, she said, 
I do love you. I do love you. That's the only word changed my whole life. Because even my parents, Japanese cultures, we don't say, I love you. Even my parents say, well, you're making trouble, so um, I don't like you. Or like, why are you born? Or like, you should not be exist. Those kind of words, I believe in that. That's why I was, my auntie was special that, I do love you, come to the States. So I came to the States, I was thinking, I was excited about it, come to the States, because I watched too much Hollywood movies. So everybody's a friend with, and this hug, and love, and then, but first class, like I went to um, university, and, and the first day, and the first month, I cry, because even nobody's care. Even I teach, people say, what's up? And I say, what, what should I say? Like, I say, I'm fine, thank you. And you, and this person's already gone. <laughs> but anyway, um, after graduate from university, and I become fashion designer at the New York City. And that was my highlight of my life, that I made it, and I make money. Now I'm living in New York. I can change the nations. But again, it was long because I, um, I had a confidence, but a weird way is that money is important. So I didn't care about relationship. Also my friends too, they promised to me that let's make project together, fashion show, and make a new fashion business. But you know what? He stole my ideas. And then finally, I went to real darkness, like more get into drugs and uh, drinkings. And then I was gonna make commit suicide because of my life is over. So see, you guys are pretty good. You're in the church and you trust in God. But my age was opposite. You see, like parents, young members, fashion design, and they got a drug addictions, and I, I lost them, like, I don't know, I lost business again in New York. And then I was gonna going back to Japan, but uh, end up, I went to one of, used as a mission, Wyvern Madison's in 1996. And I, when I went there, and I just stayed there for a couple of months. And why I become Christians? Because they support me as like love. Again, relationship. And again, love. And then, you know, like, um, I'm sorry, I talk, I talk too much about my life. But I want to encourage you that it was a big um, decision to be, become Christians. Because in Japan, uh, do you guys know Japan? Yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes people say, are you Chinese or are you Koreans? And they say, well, I'm a Japanese. Well, Asians is the same. But uh, in Japan, we have only 1% or 1% less Christians. It's pretty less. And even if I become Christians, means betrayed families. Because I'm, my family is a samurai family background. So I have to believe what family believe. So when I become Christians, and I call my dad and mom, you know what they say? Again, you betrayed families. Again. And you should not exist. I think you're not part of families. But uh, you know, like, God is so good that after I become Christians, I went to Germany for my, uh, not mission job, but uh, other job that um, God is showing me how I should do business. So I, I, should, I become like art directors of uh, opera see, in, in Germany. But I, I want to encourage you that today, I, I'm not acting like a missionary. Uh, so, um, I pray for tonight how I can encourage each person.
because uh, my story is, it's, I'm sorry, a little bit too, too dark, but uh, I want to say God is exists. And you can change, trust me, you can change your nations. Like just don't put in God in small boxes. Or just do not listen to the voice that you cannot change it. Or you are Latinos. <laughs> you cannot change USA. Or I don't know. It's enemies try to do so many things. Like all oh, your families or your educations. But I want to encourage you that even me, I can change a nation. I change in the, I believe in that. I can change in my nation, Japan. So you can't do that. You can't change it. And I want to share that um, Bible scriptures today. Matthew chapter 5, salt and light. That's how we are. I pray God uh, this morning, asking about how I can share about Bible scriptures for these Latino <laughs> young peoples. And I find, um, yeah, let's see. I'm going to just read Bible scriptures. Okay, salt and light. Uh, chapter five, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt on the earth, but if the salt loses its um, saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything expect, expect to be thrown out and the trumpet underfoot. And you are the light of the world. And town built on the hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people write a lamp and put it under the ball. Instead, of they put it on the stand, and it gives the light for everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before the others, that they may see your good deeds and glory your Father in heaven. I can see, as we are Christians, we are not religious people. Because Jesus was not a religious people. It's always he cared about religions, uh, not religion, me, relationship, friends, or like brothers and sisters. That's like I feel, even I'm, I come here from Tokyo, Japan, and my wife here too. Why we are here? Because of God is relationship, and God is calling that, come to states, and like, like yours, we want to make a mission um, group that to go into Japan, and make a community center at Japan, because we need radical, we need young people, young leaders that change Japan, or maybe change Asia, because Japanese is very uptight people. We need Latinos. <laughs> we need like dancers or singer, or we need like some people that hey, like I want to change these nations because as Japan is Japanese society is conservatives, a very conservatives always on times, Monday to Saturdays go to job, seven to ten o'clock at night time. But we need you. And uh, trust me that God is not dead. It sounds like a movie, but <laughs> God is not to forget about you. Because he keeps saying to me, because um, this month, me and the uh, mission team from Bio Madison, we went to Japan. And um, I used to have a business for own business, the art cafe in central Tokyo. And then I closed down this cafe for like three years ago. But I make a reunion parties, and like 40 people show up. And they keep saying, when you coming back here, Miami, when you coming back, when you guys coming back and changing nations, then I told them, God is not forget about you. That I will not forget about you. I will bring team, 
and I'm going to make community centers. And then they, they started crying because of their, like, same as you, young people, and they want to become leaders. But they try so hard, you know, see, much better than stay home and complain. They just go out and worship on the street, or they're preaching on the uh, street, or they just talk about relationship. Mr. Hiro, how can we just do good ministries? And I say, relationship. Only we can do as good missionary. If you want to become good missionaries, relationship. And I believe in each person that you can do it. Because I can do it. And um, thank you so much that I could talk, I could have the opportunity to talk here tonight. Because I want, I want to remember, I want to remember each person's face. Because you have ability to change this world, because we have a God who can against us. If God is us, who can against us? Um, before we finish, I finish the story. Um, would you show the Japanese pictures? I want to show like what's like Japan like. Uh, go. Okay, thank you. Oh, it's small pictures. Thank you so much. Thank you. So please um, uh, pray for me. And also, would you just pray for um, God is that. What is a real God is speaking to you for your whole life? Because, um, again, it's cheesy to say, but God is not dead. God is exist. Not only you think only God is uh, exists in the Bible, or God is maybe doesn't care about me. But he does. And when you pray God to ask him what he wants to do for your life, because I think he wants to encourage you. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Hiro. Thanks. All right, I want to just maybe share one story with you guys, but what are you hearing? What have you, what, what are you really like taking from everything like that people have been saying? What, what is standing out to you? Anything? What is it? Go to Japan. Okay, so you're going to go to Japan, so you guys should talk afterwards. Cool. Go to Japan. What else? That's good, bro. Testimonies. Okay. What is it, what is it speaking to you inside? Are, okay. so that, that we should be the difference with the, the Matthew 5 that he was reading. I read that last week, and I was like, we should be the difference. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I've been, like, working on right now. So good, that's bro. cool. Man. That's good, yeah. Yeah, like, you want to see the difference? You want to see things change? We don't have to look even outside of this room, actually. Look right next to you, right? Yeah, good, good. What else? What are you guys hearing? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, don't, we don't have to be, like specialist in something we don't have to be um like professionals and we can just use our own um abilities right now yeah yeah this is like a huge thing and we want you guys to hear it you don't have to be a professional something you have to be yourself right um and and that sounds like you know there's this thing people say like oh there's only one of you and you're so special and it sounds like kind of these cliche things but that's like a reality it's not just a cliche thing. Like the bigger thing that God needs isn't that we're professional, it's that we're available. Right? That's the bigger thing. If we're available, that's the big deal. So what else are you guys hearing? This is good. Good stuff. Good, bro. Yeah. Uh, kind of to add to what he said, um, we all have special uh, talents that God has gave us, whether it be music, whether it be um, 
just the way someone speaks. Uh, God each gave us something that he gave us because for the purpose to use it for his name. So um, I think that really touched him from Janae. And yeah, thank you for that. Good. Each person has something inside, you know, that God's put there, and He wants it to be used. It's not, it is for you, but it's not just for you. It's to go beyond, right? Good. Anybody else want to say something? Something else that stands out to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's it called? What are you saying about his parents? I mean, we're all Latinos, yeah, and our parents are strict. I can't say that word, but... They're strict, and uh, they always tell us, oh, you will you won't make it, or you won't do something, or they can be the opposite. They can be like, mija, you have to do this. Me and mommy came from Mexico. You know, you have to make our family name known. At the same time, you have to understand that it's always down to you, whether you choose to get up and get out of bed and be a success in life, or would you rather just chill with your friends and smoke weed? You get me? Like... It always comes down to one decision. It always comes down to you because no, in the future, no, ways, no one's going to pay your bills. No one's going to get up to go to your job so you can get a free paycheck. No one's going to do that. It's always going to come down to you. It's always going to come down to what you make yourself out to be. Don't blame the world or don't blame other people because you didn't want to do it yourself. Don't blame your family members because you end up being the person you are. Because, can I say a quote real quick? <laughs> um, in life you always have people that tear you down and you'll always have people who help you build up in the end you'll thank them both yeah that's it okay. so like what I'm hearing and what you're saying there is like hey it's a decision like if there's a decision place too that we're hearing in this wow like it's not enough to hear it and be exposed to it like how are, you, how are we going to respond right that's as, as significant as being exposed to that is what is our response, okay? So I would just like to tell you a really quick story. Uh, maybe two, maybe we don't have time for two. I'll tell you, yeah, I'll try. I'll try to do it fast. I'm not a very fast storyteller, but I try to be fast. Uh, so this was a friend of mine that I actually met in Chicago. And we took um, some time. How many of you guys have been to Chicago? Yeah, yeah, okay. So do you know Boys Town? Anybody know Boys Town in Chicago? You probably don't because you probably wouldn't want to go there. It's not like a nice place. If it's a place you're going to go to in Chicago, you probably wouldn't want to visit Boys Town, but that's where we were going because um, we were there on a missions trip. And we went to a, a friend's house named John Stockman. And when I walk in his house, it's like all this incense burning in the house and like all these old Rob Roscoff skateboards on the wall and stuff. And I walked up to him and he's like, he's like a really big guy, like built like me. I was like, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, like him. And he's like all these like sleeves of tattoos, like ears are gauged out here. I was like, Bum. I was like, whoa, hey, man, how's it going? You know, I was like a PK, like a pastor's kid when I grew up. And I said, so, tell me about yourself, man. He's like, yeah, I was a PK, too. And we just started talking. And, uh, and we had some all mixed up team, like kind of like this team. Like, this is how it is in YWAM always. We're like international. Everybody's from a different place and stuff. And it's really fun. And we were in there. And he started talking to us about Chicago. And God had called him as a missionary to Chicago, right? And he and his friends were just asking God this question. God, how could we show what your heart is like? your heartbeat for this city, right? And they were just spending some time praying and asking God how they could do that. And God reminded them that every year in Chicago, there's a really big gay rights parade that happens, like big deal. Have you ever heard of this parade? It's big, like thousands of people go there. And so they said, why don't you go to that parade and don't be there with like some sign that says God hates gays or some dumb thing that doesn't actually reflect God's heart. Why don't you show God's heart, right? Because something I was hearing tonight was this, the power of love. If we will really open our hearts to experience God's love, then we will have something to give, right? That I heard echoed in a few different places here. And, uh, and so they said, okay, God, we want to express your love at this parade. How could we do that? And God gave them a simple idea. Take a cooler. Okay, it happens in the summer. How many of you know that like in Chicago in the summer it gets hot? Yeah, probably here too. But like if you're in the city... Where it's not much green, you feel it, right? It's like, shh, like a cooker. And uh, so they took a cooler, they put cold water in the cooler, and they just went to give out water at the parade. That was the whole thing. That was like the idea of like how to reach this, this part of the city at this time. It was like not a very magical idea, like not very professional, just like simple, right? Like everybody gets thirsty, 
not very magical thought, just like simple, right? So they're there at this parade, and John's there, and people are walking by, and like all this thing, you know, like crazy big parade thing, gay rights parade. And he's just giving out water like this, like, here, you want a water? And this guy walks up to him, who's like makes John, like John Stockman makes me look little, and this guy made John look little, right? So he's like a big guy in a purple Speedo, that's all. Don't think about this too much, but okay. So he walks up to John in this purple Speedo, and John's like, hey, bro, you want a water? And the guy starts just like expletives all over his face, like, you, because he, he knew like that John was a Christian, like it was obvious enough. He didn't have a shirt on that said, I'm a Christian, but it was just obvious, right? And uh, he starts like chewing him on. He's like, you Christians are all, and he's like spitting on him and like up in his face, like just, you know, exploding. And John's just like, just stay there. Just like didn't go, didn't flinch. He's just like there, like taking it, like getting spit on. The guy's yelling in his face. He just waits. He's just waiting, you know? So the guy like finally kind of mellows out and he's like, yeah, bro, but it's hot. Like, do you want a water? And the guy starts in again like, you know, and he's just like reaming him out up and down. Like everything that he hated about Christians or ever heard about, whatever. He's just like bringing it all up. And John's just not like arguing with him or anything, just waiting. And he says, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's hot, right? And you're probably thirsty. Like, do you want a water? And the guy takes the water like this, like, fine. And when he takes the water, something happens inside of him that probably he doesn't even understand. But he takes the water, and something breaks inside, and he starts crying. This big dude who was, like, just a minute ago yelling in his face, like, starts crying. And he actually breaks inside, and he starts telling John, Everything that had happened to him throughout his life, like he had been abused, like all these things. Like he didn't even know this. Like he didn't even know John. It wasn't like a counseling session or anything. And he just starts like pouring out his heart. He's like, man, you don't know. And he's like started really sharing his heart. And God broke into his heart with a water bottle. Is that crazy? I think that's crazy, you know. Like God knows the way into our hearts, but he's waiting. God is waiting. To see people set free through simple things like that, right? Like, so that he's waiting for somebody to be the person who just stands there and listens while somebody gets all that off their chest and says, yeah, but you're thirsty, man, here. Right? And that doesn't have to be very professional to do that, but you have to be there. At least that, right? <laughs> be available to say, yeah, I'll stand out. I'll even let somebody spit on me. I'll even take it, whatever. Because God loves that guy, Right? And uh, that's the thing that God's looking for. I wanted to share a scripture with you guys. Um, it's in Second Chronicles 16. All right. Let me try to read this for you. I found this scripture to be super challenging myself. If I can remember the code of this iPad. I hope it's still mine. Okay. All right. This is taken from Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. Here's what it says. The eyes of the Lord. So this is talking about God now, right? It says this. The eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth. So what's the picture you're getting if you hear that? The eyes of the Lord are moving to and fro throughout the earth. He's watching. He's watching you, Wazowski. No, it's not like, the, like in a negative thing. But it's like he's looking. He's looking, right? Okay, it says this. The eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth. Why? Here's what it says. So that he can strongly support the one whose heart is completely his. So that he can strongly support the one whose heart is completely his. What does that mean? So he can strongly support the one whose heart is completely his. What do you think that means? God? Okay, yeah, the one who says, God, I trust you, like 100%. Here's my life. Here's my heart. Yeah, okay. Oh, he took your answer. Yeah. Okay, you guys can sort it out later. <laughs> right? It's like God is looking. He's looking on this earth to say, wow, is there somebody who would say, God, my life belongs to you, 100%. Right? 
no strings attached. Like, okay, like uh, Hero said, you know, oh, I, I wanted to pursue success. And I thought if I could just get success, that would be it. And then he had success, and then it wasn't it. Right? He knew, wow, there has to be something else beyond this. The thing that Janae said about wanting to pursue photography, but there's like this little ache inside, like, well, there's more than just photography. There's something else here. Right? God wants a heart that's fully his. And when we would say, God, you know what? I'll, you can have my heart. Like, my heart will belong to you. Not just in the Christian. I, I grew up in the church. My dad was a pastor. So I know the Christian thing of like, my heart belongs to you, but I'll live my life the way I want to. Right? That's not real. <laughs> so we're talking about my life belongs to you, God. Like, you call the shots. You're the one that says where I go and what I do. And when we're able to say, yeah, God, I'll stand on the street corner with a cooler and take it. Right? That's the one that God's looking for. And he says, I will strongly support that one, that kind of person. And I'll show you things that maybe other people don't even get to see. Right? But it's not based on us being professionals. It's just being available. Just being available. I want to share with you one other story. This also really happened. It was in uh, India. And it was with a, a group of students that we took there um, for a DTS field assignment, for a discipleship school field assignment. And we were just doing the same thing, just saying, God, how could we show what your heart is for this city, right? And they got this idea. It was over in India. And uh, God put in their hearts to go to a certain brothel. Does that make sense when I say that, what that is? Like a house of prostitution, okay? A place where prostitutes are, all right? Um, and they were going to go there. And what they were going to do was actually have like a, what do you call this? Like a beauty time for the ladies? Like, you know, like... A thing like, so I've never done this, but like, you know, like paint your nails and like the kind of stuff like girls would do at a hangout. I don't know, whatever, right? Makes sense to you guys? You know what I'm talking about? Somebody help me out with the wording, right? Like a beauty like a time, like a spa, like a spa thing, right? Like a spa night or whatever, but for these girls who are prostitutes, okay? Now he's like, what? That's crazy. But that was like the thing that God put in their heart, okay? So the girls on the team got like all their like nail polish and like stuff together and like went to this thing. And you know what they were doing was they were showing these girls, hey, wait a second, you are not something to be used. You're valuable and you're beautiful and we love you and God loves you, right? That's what they were showing. And so they just sat with them. They just talked with them. I think they bought like cookies and tea, which is like typical for India, like have cookies and tea, right? And they just sat with them in the, in the, in the upper floor of this house of prostitution and they just had a spa time, Right? Do you think anybody ever showed those girls that kind of love before? I don't either. I think that was like God was waiting for someone's heart who was fully his to say, you could do this. Right? This would actually express my heart if you would do this. So they did that. And this is where the story gets crazy. While they're there, this is like crazy every time I think about it. Anyways, <laughs> the, the lady who kind of runs the place. So like... I don't know what it's like here in South, this South Bend kind of, is this called South Bend? But like a lot of times around in the United States, I think like prostitutes are run by pimps. Like that's a typical thing, right? Over there, the house is run by a madam, like a lady basically like runs this business, business, <laughs> where these other girls are getting exploited, right? She comes up to the team, and she's so impacted by what had happened and their love that she said this. She said, I think, I'm not sure if I've ever done even this one kind thing in my life. Like, she's running this place, right? She's selling these girls, basically. She says, but I want to do at least one kind thing in my life. And she brings out some kids. So there were kids at this place, too. Can you imagine that? So there were kids in this brothel in this place of prostitution. And she brings out these kids and she says, I'm going to let you take out one of these kids and take them to a children's home. And we're like, what? So the team, and there was, this, there was a girl from uh, Toluca, Mexico, right? On this team and some other guys from like the East Coast and like no one was a professional. We didn't know about how to go into like do some raid on a illegal, you know, child exploitation thing or something. It wasn't like that. It was just like, let's love people and go to the nth degree, like wherever that is, right? And show God's love in the reality. And then the lady says, here, you can take them. So we took this, it was first a little girl out to a children's home and she was saved from that whole environment. Went back the next day and she gave us a little boy who was there too. 
And these are kids who are like younger than my daughter. Like that's psycho, right? That's crazy that they would even be in that environment, but that is not uncommon. But the eyes of the Lord are searching to and fro on the earth, looking for the heart that's fully his. So he can say, hey, I would trust you to do that, right? He's just waiting for somebody to say, here, I will be the one to have my heart be fully yours. And then he can give us that kind of stuff. Is that crazy? That, that's trippy to me when I think about that. It's like, wow, you don't have to be a professional. You have to be available. I don't have to know a whole lot more than I do right now, actually. <laughs> right? I just have to be willing to like, trust God and go there and do it with him. Uh, so that's the challenge I want to put to you guys is this. Like, what are you going to do with it? Okay? What are you going to do with it? You don't have to know a whole lot more than you do right now. God is looking, though. He's waiting. He's saying, wow, whose heart would be fully mine? Because there's things that he's waiting to do in this world. And he's looking for the person who say, here, I'll do it. I'll give out waters. I'll do that thing that's like not very glorious, but would actually penetrate hearts. I'll go walk into a house of prostitution and love the people actually there, even though it's like weird or not the place I would like to go, right? Um, but he's waiting for the light, right? Where is light? Where does it make sense, this whole scripture from Matthew 5 that Hero was talking about? Where does light make sense? In darkness, right? So if we already have lights on and I just keep putting on lights, it's not really even making a difference, is it? Where the light makes difference is in the darkness. And uh, I think God's really putting it in our court, right? Saying, here, what are you going to do with it? Right? So we want to actually close this time tonight. We're going to have a time to chill and talk with you guys, and we want to answer questions. But we like to, we had a song we'd like to sing for you, actually. And the lyrics of this, we're going to sing maybe two songs, is it? Yeah? Uh, what, the lyrics of one of these songs says this, so part of it says this, um, I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. And this is taken from, like, in Genesis with Abraham. He, he even takes his own son. You guys have heard this story, right? He takes his son, he says, listen, everything, God, belongs to you, Right? So I want you to, as we're, I want to, hopefully you can just reflect, maybe as we sing this song, on that, like, okay, God, would I say that to you? Like, I would do this with my hands wide open. Like, here's my life. If this is my life right now, would I do this? Would I say, you know what, God, I will follow you wherever. Like, and if it's to the nth degree, if it's to some ridiculous place in Chicago, I'm going to go there, right? Like, that's all right. If it's over in India, in a ridiculous place, I'll follow you there too. Because I'm following you, I'm not following myself. Right? So we want to challenge you guys that way and say it's really something, it's not just a challenge from us, it's something that God's looking for. He, he's waiting for you to, to respond, right? What do you, how do you want to respond? And then if you guys have questions too, we want to answer questions if we can. So it's been awesome to be with you and we invite you, if you know this song, you can sing it with us. Otherwise, let God minister to you. Um, if it helps you to close your eyes, you can close your eyes, but uh, join us in your hearts anyways. Not on my own understanding. My life is in your hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. Give it all to you, God. Trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God. I give it all to you, God. Trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I lean not on my own understanding. I lean not on my own understanding. is in the hands a maker of heaven I lean not on my own understanding my life is in the hands a maker of heaven I 
give it all to you, God. Trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God. Trusting that you'll Stand up if you would with us, even though we're sitting down. <laughs> we'll sing this. I will climb again. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. Just, just be, yeah, I guess these songs are basically like giving your heart to God and wherever you're at and with what you're hearing is just like giving your life to God and just asking him, Lord, is this, is there something that you're stirring in my heart? Is there something that I can give to you? Is there something that's stopping me from surrendering everything that I am? And, yeah, just allow even the Lord to really work in that place. Surrender.
Your sovereign hand will be my guide Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me You never fail and you won't start now everything to you, God. We surrender our lives. God, we want to know more of who you are. We want you to take us to the darkest places, God. We want to shine light. We want to be the salt. God, we want to know who, more of who you are. We want to, oh, God, we want to be in that place where we are fully accepted, God, in you. God, we want to be in that place of being fully surrendered, fully ready for everything and anything that you would ask us to do, God. Let's just sing the chorus one more time. Thanks again for letting us come to be with you guys. And uh, yeah, we're here. So we would love to, if you'd love to have any questions about, more about Youth of the Mission. Yeah. Uh, can I just say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to ask you guys to do something that I haven't really done before. Like, God will bless you 
life, and this is a great opportunity for you guys to know some faith in Jesus. Mm-hmm. So just ask all the questions, mm-hmm. and I'm so excited for everybody. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah we're glad to be with you guys. So. Yeah, we'll be here. We'll be here. So if you have questions, we want to answer your questions. Um, if you'd like us to pray with you, we're glad to pray with you. Uh, we just want to get to know you and um, share our lives together. So thanks thanks for, for letting us be with you. Siéntense dos minutos, chicos. Ya viene la pizza. Bueno, ya está la pizza y ahorita vamos a comer pizza. Se la tienen que acabar porque pidieron siete y nos regalaron siete. Así es que hay catorce pizzas, se la tienen que acabar. Ok, uh, déjenme decirles algo nada más. Let, let me, let me uh, share something very quickly and after uh, Paul, he can to share something. Um, cuando yo estaba con ustedes, when I was young, like you, nobody told me about missions. I never heard about, about missions. And, and somehow I'm here in this country like a missionary. And automatically. <laughs> I didn't know why, but I'm like a missionary in this country. So you have a great opportunity. I don't know what are you thinking about your life? What is the purpose of your life? What are you thinking to do with your lives? Maybe some of you guys, you want to be doctors or lawyers or soccer uh, players or basketball players or musicians. Whatever the field you want, you, 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 you may and you can serve the Lord in that, in that field. As you heard to, tonight, um, doesn't matter if you want to be a, 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 a photographer, a musician, or pastor. You can serve the Lord, whatever you want to decide with your life. Most of you have in your minds in this moment, what I'm, what I'm doing with my life? What is the purpose? What is the purpose for God in my life? And many of you guys, I'm pretty sure, you don't know what are you going to do with your lives. That's, that's real. So this is a great opportunity. This, and, and that's why I want to, like a, your pastor, my, my time is over. My time is over. I'm only like a coach of you. But you are with all your precious years to come for you. You, have, you are masters of technology right now. <laughs> you have all the powers of the internet. You have all the powers of the technology in your hands, not me. I'm very dumb with this thing. I, I, I want to try to look something and it, it's, all a, it's, it's a mess. You know, you're not. You are a master of technology. So, in this, imagine Apostle Paul with all the resources that you have in this moment, in this generation. Wow. Imagine Paul texting to the Ephesians Hey, what's happening in the church? Hey, Timothy, I'm hearing something wrong in the church. What happened in Ephesus? Uh, uh, sorry, Paul, I, I don't know, but uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we wasn't, it was the Corinthians. Oh, okay, let me call the Corinthians. Hey, what happened? With, imagine Paul traveling months between one church and another. And you can travel, you can fly, you can go in a bus, you can go in a car, you can do everything, guys. So if you decide, if you decide, there's a, a, a scripture. Oh, here is it. Isaías, capítulo 6. Isaiah 6, verse 8. Read it for me because I can. Sorry. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. You heard the voice of the Lord tonight. There's a lot of countries, there's a lot of people, millions of people, 
outside waiting for somebody. And I told you in the church several months ago, the doors in the missionary fields for Latinos are open right now, right now. Sorry, my beloved American guys, but the time for the American missionaries is almost over. Due to political, the troubles with the countries and everything, but for the Latinos, the Hispanos, all the doors are opening in this moment. Am I right? They say it. <laughs> for the Latinos, uh, we have a special grace from God in the missionary fields. I don't know why. I don't know why, but God is looking for Latinos to go to the missions and share the gospel. And we are, I think, Latinos. <laughs> well, you are American citizens, I know. I'm Latino. But uh, this is not my country. This is not my first country. But for most of you guys, this is your country. You are Americans. But you are Latinos in your blood. So God is looking for us. And, and this scripture says, who is going to go to the nation for us? God is not going to send angels to the nations. He is looking for persons, for youth, people like you, like Isaiah. And Isaiah said, Lord, I'm here. I'm going. So this is, the, this is the, 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 the challenge for you tonight. You hear the voice, you hear the testimonies of these guys. Uh, and like this, they are, how many people in you with a mission involved? 16,000 full time. And many more, two ships uh, across the, 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 the seas in the, in the, in the oceans, right? like, uh, two, two full, that's a huge boat, right? Medically equipment with surgeries and everything, crossing all the, from country to country, uh, uh, serving the people. So there's a lot of opportunities to serve the Lord. So please take this in your hearts, guys. And if you decide to do something, if you hear the voice, I, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands or something in this, t tonight. In this moment so but if you hear the voice of the Lord please keep it in your heart pray pray talk with yourself talk with your parents and then talk with me and maybe we can talk with these guys and we can do something this is not for emotional people this is not a moment for emotions this is a moment for convictions am I all right Okay? This is nobody, hey, when I go to the nature. No, 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 no. This is something strong in our hearts. It's a decision. It's a decision for life if you want to decide to do something like this. Maybe not in this moment. Maybe in one year, two years, three years. Maybe you need to complete your college, your education. It's, it's fine. Maybe you are going to be married in two, three, four years. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There's, he, he, we have people. Uh, married right here. And we have a lot of people in, 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 in involved in missions, in, in, in couples, marriage with the kids. How many years did you live in South Africa with the, your kids? Two years in South Africa with the kids, exposed to the uh, Ebola <laughs> and a lot of disease. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no. But w Think about it, guys, please. Think about it. This is, the, this is our first uh, uh, missionary encounter with these guys. So we're going to have a lot of these uh, uh, kind of meetings. And, and, and we can start to, to think. So you, you, you don't need to, to take a decision right now. Just think about it and put in your heart, put in your, in, in your mind, and start to, to, to pray to the Lord. And maybe, we don't know, maybe the Lord can do something with some of you guys. Paul. Applause, Paul. 
Well, thanks everybody for coming out tonight, and thank you guys for making the trip. It really means a lot. Um, for me personally, I think God spoke very clearly tonight. Um, and one thing that I want to share with you guys is you guys are at the prime age right now where you can do a lot of things. You can, you might go through a lot of uh, situations where either at home or at school or with your friends, family, whatever it is, they, you might be put down a lot of times. Your self-esteem might not be the highest. Um, you might be told that, you know, that you're not loved or like the video that, um, Joellen made, but there's a God who, who loves each and everybody. Um, every person can make a change, and one person as an individual can make a huge difference. One change that happened that was huge happened about 2,000 years ago, and it started with a carpenter who changed the world. We're here tonight, and everything that we do, our lives revolve around him, and we exist because of him. And so it's a challenge for everybody. It's a challenge for each and everybody, and each and one of you guys, to really think about what was just presented to you. These are real-life testimonies. This is not just a movie. This is not a book. These are real-life testimonies, and I think it, God's calling out. He's putting out a challenge. And as young people, we're always very competitive. You, we want to be the best on the football field, best on the soccer field. Uh, we want to be the best at everything that we do. What greater gift, what greater treasure can you have besides being in God's glory and having his grace? So that's something that I'm putting out uh, to you guys to really think about it, um, pray about it. Um, just because you're young doesn't mean that you can't do things. You know, you can, we can change the world. It's a challenge. And like I told uh, my group, we're just starting this right now, but we're going to take the city by storm. But besides that, we're taking the nations by storm. And uh, if you guys don't mind, I would really like to see if maybe we can kind of finish off with, uh, you know, with worship, but really get into it, guys. I mean, close your eyes and really give God the glory that he really deserves. And because this is a blessing that we have people coming all the way from Wisconsin and Tennessee, I mean, how much clearer does it need to be that God is watching over us? God is waiting for a response. So if, uh, if you guys could we'll close out with, you know, maybe uh, the Oceans song once again, and just I urge you guys, you know, let's give God the glory and the honor that he, he deserves. Thank you. Pónganse de pie, muchachos, cantamos esta canción y este, le voy a pedir a, 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 a Mari y Miguel que vengan también porque ellos son los líderes de SBG. To be involved in missions, you need to be 18 and over, or? No. No? no? We have things for younger too, it's okay. Oh, really? Yeah. I started out in Youth with a Mission when I was 12. Really? So I didn't do my DTS at that time, but I went with a team. I did a trip. Okay. I was for a month in India. Wow. So you don't have to be 18 to, to begin. So all, all these kind of questions, please, guys, uh, uh, in the time we're eating pizza and everything, you can, you can talk with this, this, these people, please. Talk with them. Uh, how many costs? How do you f finance uh, the financial something for the, the trips, for the school, uh, traveling, lodging, anything, whatever. Uh, um, uh, question that you have, please don't, 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 don't. No tengan duda de, hablar, de hablarlo. Mari, ven y bueno, ahorita que acaben de cantar, cantamos y este y, y, y Mari viene o Miguel oramos por los alimentos y este y, y, y vamos a comer. Okay. Cantamos.
Well, thanks again for coming us we're, for coming us with, for coming with us and sharing your stories. Um, Lo puedo decir en español. Um, ya nada más los quiero motivar a todos ustedes que tengan confianza en Dios. Dios puede hacer todo posible. Todos y cada uno de nosotros tenemos un don. Tal vez no lo tenemos capacitado, pero, pero Dios es el que se encarga de eso. Puede haber temor, yo sé que hay temor al tomar decisiones como estas. Lo que debemos de tener es un amor por Dios. Si no tenemos el amor por Dios, por la obra que Dios nos ha encomendado, no podemos hacer este tipo de misiones. El amor que Dios ha tenido por nosotros, Él dejó todo por venir a salvarnos. Entonces, ¿por qué nosotros no podemos dejar nuestros deseos, nuestras metas, por dárselo todo a Dios? Yo creo que Él se merece que le entreguemos nuestras vidas, nuestras metas, nuestros sueños, y Él nos va a recompensar no solamente aquí en este mundo, también en, el, en la eternidad. Y ustedes son la luz del mundo, la sal del mundo, todos los cristianos somos. Y el entregar nuestra vida a Dios no solamente es una oración, es entregarle todo, es entregarle todo lo que Él se merece. Y no tengan miedo, déjenlo todo en manos de Dios, que Él nos va a respaldar, nos va a acompañar y Él se va a encargar de todo lo demás. Well, first of all, I want to thank them for coming, taking their time. And I just want to, you know, for you guys to take a step, you know, further from what you're doing right now, you know. Oh, man, I'm so nervous, but hey. It's, it's, I want to thank him for, for your lives. Every time, you know, I give a class, I, I talk to you guys of, you know, being better and what you do. But every time you do something, you know, you got to praise the Lord every time, no matter what. So, you know, just work your way up and then you're going to get there. But you got to get there with the Lord, with nobody else. So, praise him forever. Thank you for coming. Gracias. Llegaron los de Tennessee. ¿Ontan? Uh, tan más agüita. ¿Ontan Tennessee? Ok, gracias muchachos. Qué bueno que ya llegaron con bien. Bienvenidos. Y este, ahorita vamos a compartir entonces con todos. There's the, the group from Tennessee. They are going to, to, to worship tomorrow in the, in the, in the service. So, We're going to have a powerful praise and worship, right, JP? Okay. Vamos a orar, vamos a darle gracias a Dios y nos vamos a las pizzas. Por favor, platiquen con los muchachos, share with them, talk with them, and ask all your questions, please. We have a five minutes per pizza. No, okay. El tiempo que quieran. Let's pray. Señor, muchas gracias por esta tarde. Gracias por este tiempo hermoso, Padre, porque hemos podido conocer más de ti, hemos podido aprender más acerca de lo que tú estás haciendo a través de la gran comisión para enviarnos. Y si a ti te place llamar a alguno de estos jóvenes, Padre, queremos que tú les capacites, toques sus corazones más allá de sus emociones y que puedan tomar una decisión respecto a lo que tú has hablado esta noche para ellos. Bendíceles y bendice estos alimentos que has preparado para nosotros en nombre de Jesús, amén, amén